Good day, future nurses. And welcome to this lecture on the Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses, or IMCI. Today, we'll focus on managing four of the most common childhood symptoms seen in primary care settings, cough or difficulty breathing, diarrhea, fever, and ear problems. This is essential knowledge for community nurses, especially when managing children under 5 years old. Let's begin by understanding what IMCI really is. The Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses, or IMCI, is a WHO and UNICEF strategy focused on reducing childhood mortality and improving quality of care for children under 5 years old. It integrates the management of common and life-threatening illnesses, like pneumonia, diarrhea, malaria, measles, and malnutrition, into one cohesive approach. Rather than focusing on one symptom or disease at a time, it looks at the child holistically. One of the unique features of IMCI is its color-coded classification system, pink for urgent referral, yellow for treatable in primary care, and green for home management. This allows healthcare providers, including nurses, to make quick and standardized decisions. When a child presents with cough or difficulty breathing, the IMCI approach starts with a structured assessment. You need to ask, how long has the child been coughing? Is there chest indrawing? Do you hear strider while the child is calm? Next, you count the respiratory rate. Fast breathing is defined as 50 or more breaths per minute for children 2 to 12 months, and 40 or more for children aged 1 to 5 years. As nurses, we must be accurate in measuring the respiratory rate, educate the mother about warning signs, like difficulty breathing or chest indrawing, and teach how to soothe the child and keep them hydrated. After assessment, we move on to classification. If the child shows chest indrawing, strider when calm, or any general danger sign like lethargy or convulsions, classify them as severe pneumonia. This is a pink classification requiring urgent referral and a first dose of antibiotic before transfer. If the only finding is fast breathing, this is pneumonia, a yellow classification. You can treat with oral antibiotics like amoxicillin and advise the caregiver to return for follow-up after two days. If there are no danger signs or fast breathing, the child has no pneumonia, a green classification. Recommend home care, fluids, and advise the caregiver to return if the condition worse. Next is diarrhea, one of the leading causes of childhood death. Start your assessment by asking, how long has the diarrhea lasted? Is there any blood in the stool? Then assess for signs of dehydration, are the eyes sunken? Is the child lethargic or irritable? Does the skin pinch on the abdomen return slowly? As nurses, we play a vital role in managing dehydration. We prepare oral rehydration solution, ORS, teach about zinc supplementation, and choose between plans A, B, or C depending on the level of dehydration. Based on what we find, we classify, severe dehydration is identified by lethargy, sunken eyes, inability to drink, or very slow skin pinch return. This is a pink case, and the child needs urgent referral and IV fluids, or ORS if IV is unavailable. If the child is alert but irritable, drinks eagerly, and the skin pinch returns slowly, it's some dehydration, a yellow classification. Start ORS using Plan B and monitor closely. If the child is well and alert with no signs of dehydration, this is no dehydration, a green case. Continue feeding, give ORS using Plan A, provide zinc for 10 to 14 days, and advise the caregiver to watch for warning signs. For fever, always begin with checking general danger signs, like lethargy or convulsions. Ask about recent exposure to measles and whether the child lives in a malaria endemic area. Look for associated signs like rash or a stiff neck, which might indicate meningitis. As nurses, our responsibility includes providing antipyretics like paracetamol, ensuring hydration, and watching closely for signs of malaria, measles, or other infections requiring specific treatment. The fever classifications are, if danger signs or stiff neck are present, classify as very severe febrile disease. This is pink, and the child must be urgently referred. If you're in a malaria endemic area and no other clear cause is found, classify as malaria, yellow classification. Start anti-malarial therapy. If the child has had measles and now shows complications like mouth ulcers or eye discharge, classify as complicated measles, also yellow. If the child just has a runny nose, it's likely a viral fever, which falls under the green classification. Give supportive care and advise the caregiver to monitor. With ear problems, ask if the child has had ear pain or discharge, and for how long. 
Examine for any swelling behind the ear, which might indicate a complication like mastoiditis. As nurses, we manage most ear problems at the primary care level. Teach ear hygiene, how to dry the ear with clean cotton, and when to seek help again. We classify ear problems like this. Mastoiditis is when there's tender swelling behind the ear. This is a pink classification and requires urgent referral. If there is ear discharge for more than 14 days, it's a chronic ear infection. If it's less than 14 days with pain, it's acute. Both are yellow classifications, treated with antibiotic drops or oral meds. If no pain or discharge is present, the child has no ear infection, a green case. No treatment is needed, but advised to return if symptoms develop. Finally, let's talk about your role as nurses in implementing IMCI. Use the IMCI chart booklet for consistent assessment and classification. Always check for general danger signs first. Treat or refer based on the color-coded category. Educate caregivers clearly and simply. Ensure follow-up is scheduled and that parents know when to return immediately. Your clinical judgment, communication skills, and confidence in the IMCI system can help save lives and improve child health outcomes in your communities. Now that we've completed the discussion on the IMCI guidelines for common childhood symptoms, let's apply what we've learned through a few practice questions. These questions are designed to help you test your understanding of assessment, classification, and management based on IMCI protocols. Read each question carefully, choose the best answer, and reflect on the rationale provided. Let's begin. A 10-month-old child is brought to the clinic with cough and fast breathing. The respiratory rate is 52 breaths per minute. There is no chest indrawing or strider. Based on IMCI guidelines, how should this child be classified? A. Severe pneumonia. B. Pneumonia, C. No pneumonia, D. Very severe disease. The correct answer is B. Pneumonia. A respiratory rate is greater than or equal to 50 in children aged 2 to 12 months is considered fast breathing. Without chest indrawing or general danger signs, this classifies as pneumonia, yellow, per IMCI. Next. Which of the following signs indicates that a child with diarrhea is classified under severe dehydration? A. Drinks eagerly when offered ORS. B. Eyes not sunken. C. Skin pinch goes back very slowly. D. Child is alert and playful. The correct answer is C. Skin pinch goes back very slowly. Skin turgor returning very slowly is a key sign of severe dehydration or pink in IMCI, often requiring IV therapy and urgent referral. Next, a child with fever has a runny nose, no rash, and is not in a malaria risk area. What is the most appropriate classification under IMCI? A. Fever, malaria suspected. B. Complicated measles. C. Fever, probably viral infection. D. Very severe febrile disease. The correct answer is C. Fever, probably viral infection. In the absence of danger signs, malaria, or measles related symptoms, a fever with runny nose is classified as a viral infection or green that can be managed at home. Next question A two year old presents with ear discharge for 16 days. There are no general danger signs. How should this child be classified under IMCI? A. Acute ear infection. B. Mastoiditis. C. Chronic ear infection. D. No ear infection. The correct answer is C. Chronic ear infection. Ear discharge for more than 14 days indicates chronic ear infection or yellow. Treatment includes antibiotic ear drops and ear cleaning, but referral is not immediately required unless complications arise. Last question. Which of the following is not a general danger sign assessed during the IMCI evaluation? A. Inability to breastfeed. B. Sunken eyes. C. Lethargy or unconsciousness. D. Convulsions. The correct answer is. Letter B. Sunken eyes. Sunken eyes are a specific sign of dehydration, not a general danger sign. General danger signs include convulsions, lethargy, unconsciousness, inability to drink, breastfeed, and vomiting everything.
That ends our presentation on IMCI. As future nurses, always remember that early assessment and proper management can save a child's life. Thank you for your attention, and let's continue to care with competence and compassion. Feel free to ask questions. Thank you.